What is going on YouTube? Modsville USA here with a brand new video and I just got my hands on this Easy Flash Junior. Uh, this is a newer flash cart for the Nintendo Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Now I'm very stoked. I didn't even know this existed until I was looking. So just pick one of these up. Ta-da, I've been meaning to get one of these for a while. This is an Easy Flash Omega for the GBA. And then I saw that these are a thing for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. So let's check this out. The packaging's pretty basic. Nothing in the box. And nice, we got a nice little Game Boy cart here. It's got a nice little texture. Ooh, really crappy sticker. It's kind of coming up. Yeah, you can see in that lighting. At least on camera, it's got a nice little glitter to it. Don't much care for the sticker, but it is what it is. It's built pretty sturdy. The PCB looks nice from what I can tell. You know what? Let's just take this sticker off. It's got a very clean PCB. Might as well just showcase it. All right, dudes. Get that sticker off. Hit it with some goo gone. Use a paper towel to clean it up. Uh, oh, I got goo gone on my finger. No. <laughs> Yeah, that looks way cleaner. I like that a lot. Very nice. Well, it's built well. The PCB looks super clean. It's got a replaceable battery in case the battery dies. Nice and easy to swap. You just got to remove the shell. Looks like it's just one screw. Yeah, very cool. Now, it doesn't come with an SD card. I've got a little 4 gig boy sitting around here somewhere. So, I'm going to load it up with some... Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs as well. There's some homebrew like LSDJ and uh, MGB. Some music software. And we'll see if Game Boy, um, my Arduino boy, works out with this as well. So yeah, let's get into that. Alright, for setting up the SD card, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is come over here to the Easy Flash Junior page on their website and scroll down and grab the latest kernel. So you're going to want to grab this and extract it to the root of your SD card. Also, um, your SD card is going to want to you're going to want to have it uh, FAT32, and it suggests a cluster size of 32K. So I've already got my SD card set up uh, with Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs. So let's take a look here. Cool. Got my cart in my Game Boy and we're just gonna boot her up. All right. Now we've got these uh, wild lines going up and down. That is not happening on uh, in real life. That is just uh, how the LCD is being captured right now, or the screen. So I've got a couple folders here. We got the Game Boy folder. I've got a Chip Tunes folder here, and a GBC. Folder. So we got LSDJ MGB, which allows us to play uh, the Game Boy with a computer uh, or a keyboard via MIDI. We got Nano Loop. LSDJ, I already tested it and it seems to be working just fine. Nano Loop crashed on me qu pretty quickly, so it might not be supported. Well, let's try a game. So this is the full set here. 
We're gonna test the, one of these, and then we're gonna pop into, uh, um, pop this in my um, GBA, and we'll check out some Game Boy Color games. Burger time. Actually, you know what, let's do Castlevania. Adventure. As you can see, that loaded up very quickly. Yeah, dude, this is great for the price. About 50 bucks. Have the entire... Game Boy, Game Boy Color library at your disposal, as well as access to LSDJ. Speaking of which, let's check that out. So that boots up pretty quickly. A little longer than Castlevania, I think it's a larger ROM file. As you can see, we're in here. It's working just fine. Now, I completely forget how to use this software is pretty complicated. It's actually insanely complicated, so I'm gonna have to read some guides again to get back in the swing. I've made a song or two in here. So we got a chain, got a song, all that. It's been a minute since I've dabbled in LSDJ, but um, it's very cool, very sweet software. It's basically FL Studio or Ableton Live. Um, it's a DAW. But on your Game Boy. That was pretty great. You got a waveform here. Yeah, you can uh, control the hell out of the internal chip, which sounds pretty great. So let's check it out on my GBA and load up some uh, Game Boy Color ROMs. Alright, so I got it hooked up in to my nice little backlit Game Boy Advance here. The screen's playing significantly nicer with my webcam here. Now, whenever you reboot it, you get this nice little uh, backup save option. Let's go ahead and do it. Now, this is the older screen I've been considering. Um, I have been considering getting the new IPS screen from Handheld Legend. probably do a install video of that if I do get it. So let's check out some Game Boy Color ROMs. So right left we'll do a, a larger scroll up down a slower a slow scroll. Let's see. Let's check out Street Fighter Alpha the Game Boy Color. I like the widescreen mode. I know it distorts a bit, but whatever. Lee. Here we go. Oh, this is cool. Fuck it, I'm a Mortal Kombat guy, personally. Yeah, that works great, man. 
But one more little test. I've got this unofficial third party Chinese Game Boy Color clone called the GB Boy Color. Did a video on it uh, quite some time ago. Let's see if it works in here. Hmm. Ooh. It does not like it. Yeah, GB Boy Color. Does not comprehend. Alright guys, no matter what I do, I cannot get this working on my Super Game Boy. I don't know what the deal is here. I've tried uh, cleaning the contacts on both. And no matter what, I just get a black screen. Super Game Boy is fine though. Got a copy of uh, Dr. Mario right here. Let's see. And that boots up just fine. Check it out. So, yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Um, I had watched Rostalgia's video on uh, on this, and it worked just fine for him. So, I don't know what's going on with mine, but it is not working for the Super Game Boy. That's pretty weird. All right, dude. So, here I am on my modded uh, GameCube running Game Boy interface with the flash cart plugged in to my Game Boy player. Probably the ideal way to um, capture this. And yeah, it's working perfectly fine. Now you can get a better look at what's going on. So we can set the time here if we want. Might as well. Cool. We got the time up, we have it at auto save, and then help just shows the firmware version. And yeah, all is uh, running quite well. Now let's make sure all of our ROMs show up. I believe they should, but there might be we might hit uh, some sort of limit. Let's see. No, yeah, that is good. Load up some Simpsons, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. What the f Zoom. What the fuck does my slingshot even? Oh, okay, there it goes. And one of the nice things about the Game Boy Player, once you're in the interface here, if you hit reset, it does not reset the GameCube completely. It resets the Game Boy Player. So that is very sweet. And we can get LSDJ going too here if we want to. And here we are running LSDJ on the Nintendo Game Boy on the Nintendo GameCube and Game Boy interface. Very cool.
Now I'm probably gonna do some uh, live streams, trying to figure out how to make music with this thing. So uh, cruise by Twitch if you want to see that go down. Could be fun. Could be weird. Could be wild stuff. Well, all in all, dudes, the Easy Flash Junior for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. The best bang for your buck that you are going to get out of any flash card on the market for the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color. And the same stands still for the Easy Flash Omega for Game Boy Advance. At around 40 bucks for each of these, you just you can't beat it. It's very good price. And you can play any ROM you want on them. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't didn't work on every device. I have seen it working on a Super Nintendo before, the Super Game Boy. Couldn't get it working on mine, so please let me know in the uh, comments where I'm goofing up. But yeah, if you're a fan of the DMG, fan of the GBC, gotta have it, must have. If you make music with LSDJ, highly recommend it. Thank you for watching, guys. Mazville, USA. Signing out. Bye-bye.